Uh, hello everyone, this is Dan Greisenhout talking to you from my How To Guru YouTube channel. And today I'd like to talk to you about Adobe Photoshop. Now I've been a long time user of Adobe Photoshop and I've used it in my day to um, add text to photos and effects to photos and to resize and redefine them. Uh, existing photos in effect to create thumbnails and screenshots for websites and and to also create ad additional uh, effects on them that I could put onto websites as well. Uh, but recently I ran across a company called Control Plus Paint who has put a number of videos out on YouTube in the area of uh, digital creative artwork uh, working with Adobe Photoshop. Now I've liked this work so much that uh, I've decided to put a playlist together on my How To Guru site and uh, show his work off. Uh, so um, what you're going to see in a number of videos that I'm going to have on a playlist channel uh, uh, for this is uh, his work on uh, drawing techniques, sketching techniques, uh, working with lines and shadows and other brush stroke uh, techniques and tricks. Uh, and uh, working in different kinds of textures, including uh, grayscale. So without spending more time on it, please uh, take a look at his videos attached, and I hope you enjoy them just as I did. Bye for now. I'm sure you've asked yourself at some point, how many layers should I have in my Photoshop painting? Well, this is actually an incredibly old question, because there was a time long before Photoshop where artists had very expensive pigment. In fact, it was so expensive they had to invent a way to make sure they didn't waste it. They wanted to avoid mistakes. So what they created was called indirect painting, in which you'd come to your color slowly through layering. So I want to give you a quick overview of the two primary types of painting, so you can consider them when you're making your choice about how many layers to have in your Photoshop document. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint Store. So I should start off by asking you, can you see a difference between these two colors? No matter how hard you look, you won't be able to, because on a computer screen, they're exactly the same. In fact, they have what's called a hex value, which is a very specific way of telling the computer exactly what color it is. But what you don't know is the process through which I found these two colors. On the left, you see indirect painting. This is where I layered a couple different multiply layers over top of a gray stroke. And what I ended up with was that color, 5E679B. On the right, I opened up my color picker, carefully selected it manually, and then laid down on a single stroke. And what you're seeing here are the two primary types of painting, indirect on the left and direct on the right. If you're using direct painting, odds are your layer stack could be very short. You could do two or three layers for the entire painting. On the other hand, if you were using indirect painting, you would probably have more layers, which could slow down your computer. So each has their own benefits, and they also have their own downfalls. It's generally harder to do direct painting because you don't have the benefit of finding your values and finding your colors through layering. You just have to pick a color and go with it. But if you can do that, it ends up being a more lightweight, quick workflow. Because unlike those painters from hundreds of years ago, you don't have to worry about certain pigments costing more than other pigments. You can use any color you want. But indirect painting has a great way of avoiding risk. If you start with an underpainting and then build up on top of it, you know at every stage of the game that it's working for you. I like to recommend indirect painting to beginners because it's a great way to build up a drawing slowly. Also knowing that it will have a few more layers in the long run, but that's okay because you can flatten them down as you go. But if you're really feeling bold and have good observational skills, try some direct painting where you pick the colors on your color picker and apply them directly to the canvas. So hopefully this will help you decide how many layers to paint with as you're painting and know a little bit about the history of it all. Thanks for watching. Thank you for uh, watching uh, this video. Uh, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel to get uh, all the videos in this series. You can do that by clicking on the subscribe button just to the right. 
And uh, you can also interact with us on our blog at http colon slash slash howtoguru.blogsport.ca. So just click on that link and uh, feel free to post any comments and we'll respond as quickly as we can. The next video will be starting in just a few seconds. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.